Hello, everybody. Welcome to Most Wanted Topics. I'm your host, Kevin Dennison, along with me, the mighty Mafu, the lead things off. Atomic Tommy is here. He'll be up in the next segment. But uh, we just wanted to uh, have Mafu kick it off because we had uh, some fun things happen this week, and we want to recap that. And uh, he wanted he just couldn't wait. He had to chomp at the bit to talk about it. So uh, we're broadcasting from our studio here at Most Wanted Comics in beautiful Bloomington, Minnesota. Mighty Mafu, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you, brother? Yeah, not bad. We had a we had a great week, and uh, to cap things off on the weekend on Saturday, of course, we've been advertising it coming up, and finally it came. Jimmy Hart came to our store and signed autographs for the fans. And Mafu, let's get your take. You wanted to talk about this, so here you go. It was fun. I mean, he was a nice guy. He was funny. It was really funny. I got to hold his actual megaphone that's been around the world. And that thing was so cool. And there's a picture of it, of me screaming into his ear with it, that you can see up on your screen. Just like the Mighty Mafu, always talking (laughs) loud, talking big. Yeah. Well, you know, it was a blast. He had a lot of fun stories to tell. And I tell you, he couldn't believe how cold it was here. Exactly. The the poor guy, we need to get a space heater in here. and, And he was just... He was so cold, but you know what? He was such a good sport about it. He had so much fun. We had fun with him. The fans had fun with him. The fans that came really got their money's worth, I would oh, say. Oh, yeah. Because he spent time with everyone. Everyone. He even signed these cool little megaphones, uh, and they look awesome. They got He he decorated the hearts with the with the paint markers. And, of course, we can't forget the exclusive figure. Uh, he, he got to autograph that. Yeah, so. this figure is awesome. I mean, with the red and the orange and the yellow. It's Hulk Hogan's colors, and these just came out. And I, I got, I got to tell you, they just came out at Target, and uh, we got, to, we got to be the first to have them sign the, yeah. the first wave <laughs> of these figures. So, uh, most wanted comics makes history again, folks. I tell you yeah. what, and it was really cool. We haven't had this many people come to the store since our grand opening, right? Uh, so it was nice to see you know over a hundred people come come to the doors, I know. you know, throughout the day and uh, meet the mouth of the South. Well, yeah, and and there were some people that just came to shop comics had no idea that Mount of the South was here. But you know what? We had a we had a great comic book day. We had a great day for Jimmy Hart. And Jimmy Hart uh, had fun. Oh, he had fun, and and uh, we had fun, and it was such an honor to meet him. You know, growing up watching him, it was just a, it was it was our privilege to host him. And uh, Jimmy, I just want to say thanks again. You're a good friend of Most Wanted Comics. Thanks for coming out to. To Minnesota in January. I know that was a, a tough deal for you. So thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with us. So uh, we'll see you again soon. Uh, we we're happy to have you. Uh, Mafu, anything else you want to talk about here? You want to preview what you're going to talk about yeah. next week with uh, some toys? Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about some G.I. Joe next week from my own personal collection. Oh, wow. And uh, something else, Star Wars. I'm going to talk about something Star Wars. So be prepared for that. That's all I'm going to say. So be prepared for that one. Cool. So, all right, everybody. Uh, we're going to be right back uh, with uh, Atomic Tommy. Stay tuned, everybody. All right, everybody. We're back with Atomic Tommy. Tommy, you know, this time you got to go. How'd that feel to go second in the rotation this time and not, not first up like always? And we, we broke I, the cycle. You know, I, I don't know. It. You know, you gotta you gotta switch things up. You'll make it interesting every once in a while. Yeah, know? we do got to mix it up. Uh, you know what? We're, we're this is the last. Uh, you know, this the ring behind us. We're in the ring because we 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 recapped Jimmy Hart in the first segment. Uh, I know you're it not as, fun. you're not as big of a wrestling fan as the mighty Mafu and myself, but I gotta say, you got to spend some time with with, with Mr. Hart. What did you think? Man, he was he was a really nice guy. He was yeah. incredibly, you know, for his age. He was incredibly, he was awesome. Yeah, he had just had a birthday. And, just had uh, a birthday. He was awesome. He was he was fun to be around. He was just he just had a great you know energy really. I, you know, I you know one thing I learned more is I didn't know how much into the music he was. Oh yeah, well, well, that was a, I mean I heard about the Gentries. I didn't know how how many people he got to meet and play with. What an honor! I mean, meeting the people he got to meet back in the day. Those are all legends and icons in the music world. Yep. I the mean, Gentries was a great band. They were a great group, and uh, it was awesome to have him here. Just for that, I know, I don't know. We didn't really have many Gentry's fans showing up yesterday, but I was one of them. Yeah, well, you, know? you actually know the classic hits because you actually because you love music and your study of music. So I know you knew that there. There's not a lot of people that knew a lot of the Gentry's, you know. And and uh, there was one guy that did bring in a Gentry's album, and it was fun to hear him tell the stories. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, Jimmy Hart. 
great guest. Uh, you got to meet him, and I'm glad you got a chance to have that life experience. Uh, but let's talk about some comic books. That's what we're here for. We are a comic book store, after all, uh, as well as toys and, and pop culture. But uh, let's talk about some books that came out this past week. Uh, what do we got to talk about today? Yeah, a couple books. Um, I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna break the ice. Stop avoiding it. We're gonna talk about gang Stop war. Stop avoiding it. Uh, Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man, Gang War, and we're also gonna talk about. Uh, the new Vengeance of Moon Knight by Jen McKay. You know, what, let's actually start with that one because, you know, Spider Man's going to be a whole thing. So let's uh, let's start with Moon Knight. Um, this was great. You know, I, what I really liked about it was I really liked how it, it picked up after thirty left off, but it it did so in a way so that if you're a new reader who didn't read the last Moon Knight run, you can start here, know what's going on completely have a sense and be able to follow it from here. You don't have to. I don't think reading this, you don't have to have read uh, the last run. It helps, and I'm sure it'll help in the future. You might not know who's Hunter, who Hunter's Moon is, uh, Moon Knight's sort of half-brother. Uh, not not really like blood half-brother, but uh, he's just another fist of Conchu, so you were confused about that. I hope that helps. And uh, also... Yeah, yeah, you know, if you're not a Moon Knight fan and you want to start reading this, don't be afraid to pick this book up, man. It's gonna, I think it's gonna have a new story. There's a brand new guy in the Moon Knight costume that we don't know who it is yet. It's a big uh, mystery, so uh, I'm looking forward to see where that goes. I think it was a strong start, and we'll see uh, how that how that shakes out. I think it'll be good. You know, I always encourage people to read, you know, Moon Knight. So Moon Knight is a good it. story. It, I just the character is just cool. Yeah, I just like the, the character. And uh, on to Amazing Spider-Man. Um, you know, I have been very vocal about my distaste for Amazing Spider-Man in the past. Uh, ragging on the editors. <laughs> you the know, you haven't held back. I yeah. haven't held back. But you know what? All things considered, it, 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 and it's not really one person's fault. I think no one's hands are really clean over there at Marvel on this. But what I think when we're talking about gang war here, it isn't actually all that bad. You know, what? It, um, <laughs> I mean, it's not great, but it's not that bad either. This is the first time where I've actually read Amazing Spider-Man comic and actually sort of enjoyed myself. Well, you've had a um, change of heart. Cha oh. you know, change of heart. Well, there's still things. There, there are strongs. There are pros. There are cons, you know. And I think we really, this really highlights, I think, Zeb Wells', Zeb Wells strength when writing Amazing Spider-Man. That's writing the villains. Because what he does, what he does a really good job at is making these characters human, and making and giving these characters interesting and sort of in depth arcs that really speak to them and their you know that that little shred of humanity, and that's really what we see in Tombstone here. Tombstone's had a great arc over this gang run stuff, or gang run gang war uh, storytelling, and I've loved Tombstone. This is the first time I've actually cared about Tombstone, and you know going back a little bit into sort of past issues. I thought everything he did with Norman Osborn and Green Goblin was really cool. So giving him that redemption arc, you know, how he deals with the grief and the you know, guilt of what he's done. And I think it's also really a prime example of Zeb Wells versus the editors, what the editors and the higher ups want versus what Zeb Wells has wanted. It's very clear that Norman Osborn was supposed to be, you know, reformed. He's supposed to be a good guy now, but you know, you get that. You had that little teaser where you know he sort of laughs in that goblin voice again, and you're just like, man, that was clearly not something that Zeb Wells wanted to do. I don't think because that's just the wrong move all around. Um, and in Gang War again, the standouts really been the villains. This is this is a story that focused on, you know, all of these different villains operating out of New York, New York, Hammerhead, uh, uh, Madam Mask, you know. Uh, Tombstone and his daughter, really. Tombstone's daughters had a big play in this. Diamondback and Harlem. All of these villains uh, sort of coming together, clamoring for territory. And it's a, it's a big story. You know, this issue, we had Kingpin coming back and his son, The Rose, which was very cool. Uh, so, yeah, I've really loved all the villains in this. I've really loved how they've all interacted. Well, you're a Kingpin fan, too. Oh, I love Kingpin. Oh, yeah, everybody likes Kingpin. Nobody nobody dislikes Kingpin. Nobody dislike, Nobody dares to dislike Kingpin. No, you can't um, <laughs> But yeah, oh, and I also think it's kind of cool in concept. Um, I, you know, I don't love all of the characters that Spider-Man is teaming up with. Uh, but I do think it's cool in concept that, you know, they're sort of bringing all these modern street-level Marvel characters together in the Defenders style. 
Uh, but, you know, really the heroes do kind of, I think, fall back in the uh, shadow to the villains in this. So gang war, I don't think it's all that terrible. Um, but again, it's a big event. Usually they bring, usually events typically tend to have a little bit more focus and a little bit more, I think, care put into them than modern stories. So we'll see what happens when gang war ends. Uh, but for now, Amazing Spider-Man, I think, has uh, come back a little bit. Wow. And you uh, totally threw me for a loop here because after all the dumping and dumping on, on this is trash, this well, is garbage. It, it, doesn't for, it doesn't forgive... All the P.O. boxes happened. I had to give out, you know, so Marvel could, you know. <laughs> Doesn't <laughs> forget what's happened, but to be honest with you, I, I don't hate it this time, I think. And I haven't read all the tie-ins. Uh, I mean, with these big events, there's always a million, you know, tie-in books that of all these different characters. But I, I with them, I never read all the tie-ins. I never really care to read all the tie-ins. There's, I don't, I don't care what every character is doing during this. So I haven't read all the tie-ins. Um, but from what I have read, just the main line. But you stuff. like Tombstone. But I like Tombstone. Well, Tombstone doesn't have a tie-in story. Let's circle back to that because Tombstone is also a western, <laughs> and we we know, you know, uh, Tombstone is one of the greatest westerns ever made. Now <sighs> you had a disagree- coming, I? Yeah. You uh, disagreed with that vehemently, and uh, I think if we if people if you if this guy here. He did not understand that Tombstone was one of the greatest westerns ever made, and I am talking I did not about that. You're right. the Kurt Russell with Val Kilmer. And uh, if you want to chime in and comment to Tommy and explain to him that Tombstone is truly one of the greatest westerns ever made, feel free to comment on the bottom because this guy didn't understand that. And uh, so here's we what like I'll, Tombstone coming. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. <laughs> I, at the time, given my at ignorant time, youth, <laughs> did not understand the importance that Tombstone held to some people of my father's age group. <laughs> uh, I did not understand how like important Again, it was to you them. You can reach Tommy at P.O. Box. <laughs> um, but I do not like Westerns, and well, I do not particularly care for the film. So I'm going to mute his mic now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please do. I don't want to talk about Tombstone because I don't like Tombstone. Okay, now you just upset our whole audience. Good. <laughs> I, no, hope, that's I, go, awesome. I hope so. So what do we have to look forward to next week? Well, Come, this week's coming a, out this week. This, week's a, this week is a humongous week for comic books. We have Action Comics, number 1061. Action Comics? What are you talking about Action Comics for? Well, Jason Aaron starts writing Action Comics uh, Love in this Jason issue. Aaron. We're all Jason Aaron fans here. And I will be reading Action Comics. You're going to hear some Action Comic reviews coming out of Atomic Tommy next week. So look forward to that. Also... Transformers number four. I gotta mention it. People look forward to it. Transformers comes out next week or this week. And uh, switching over to Marvel a little bit, the big one, the hitter, Ultimate Spider Man number one comes out. That's gonna be a big book. Everybody's excited for that. I'm excited for that. Are you excited for that? Did we order enough copies? We're about to find out. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Who's in charge of ordering around here? Me. But <laughs> listen, every comic we don't sell. You know, we're not going to order a million <laughs> copies, okay? No, that's cool. All right, you heard it. We're going to have a big week for comics this week coming up, so hopefully we'll see a lot of you guys on Wednesday. Hey, I got to tell you, we got time for our weekly lookout. Have we had correspondence with uh, who we're looking for? You know, we've been we've been on the lookout for Dan Jurgens here for quite some time, and uh, we emailed again. Uh, you know, have, have we got a response? We have not got a response, but... We're looking. We're looking out Jergens. for Dan Jurgens. We're going to keep it a little bit shorter this week, the lookout, but we want to get him to the store. Yeah, we, we love Dan Jurgens. We want him to do a signing, so... Uh, we're we're looking for you, Dan. Come on, come on out. We're, we uh, we we do want you to come to the store and do a signing. Uh, we love your work. You're a legend in the industry, and we want to honor that. So we'll be on the lookout. Uh, so that was our stable. But yeah, stay tuned for our uh, metaphorical safari. <laughs> metaphorical safari next week. <laughs> um, yeah. So what else? Anything else? I think that about covers it. You know, have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs>